first. Stellar Steph, nine. Welcome. <clears throat> All right, everybody, we're waiting for Brandon. I try my best to always look at the the comments and questions while while people are uh, talking, uh, you know. But I do I do my best. So if I see something, I'll try to ask him. Hey, Brandon. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. I appreciate, I appreciate the nice plants in the background. Those look nice. They are, the plants in my house are very happy. That makes me happy. <laughs> I got, yes. I got, a new, I got a new plant back there that my my wife is, you know, she's got a green thumb and that's a new one that, that uh, actually I need to water today. So I'm glad I saw your plant to remind right me. Right on. To get some I, I let my, they're called uh, Monstera Deliciosa. I let them just kind of overtake and they have uh -huh. uh, aerial roots and they just wrap around the the potters that I have them in. It's fun. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice that you're letting them take over and run wild. You know, that's uh, yeah. an important thing to do. So thanks for, um, thanks for joining me today. This has been something I've been doing, talking to different you know, artist brands, different people, and, and sort of um, trying to stay connected uh, in a time where we physically can't be together or hug, mm. high five or any of those things and yeah. tours getting canceled, you know, the, the whole deal. We've been talking about it for weeks. Um, yeah. So I appreciate you being here. And um, yeah, thanks and for hey, having me, man. Here's a positive thing. We probably wouldn't have seen each other unless it was at a local grocery store again. Um, I know, right? Under a different, and the last time I saw Brandon, he was, he was dealing with fear of a fire just like i had dealt with a couple years ago so i'm glad it didn't hit you and so that's yeah great. yeah there's uh, always something trying to uh trying to kill us here it's, always something yeah you know it's wild though to think about it when you put it into perspective um this is by by plague standards plague standards this is a uh this is obviously really scary and it's wreaking havoc on us but by plague standards this is pretty mild uh -huh. um and when i say that there's always something trying to kill you i say that definitely with my tongue firmly pressed into my cheek um but we live in really fortunate times for stuff like that like there's uh we have uh, even now we have access to clean drinking water which is yeah. a kind of a kind of a new technology in, in sure. human existence uh uh, plumbing, um, electricity, <laughs> yeah. medicines. Uh, we have in, in the event that we are socially distanced, we have these incredible technologies where we can see each other's faces and we can have conversations and um, sometimes plot uh, strategies and solutions to to potentially big problems. So, but I guess what I'm trying to say is it could be a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, I, I agree. And imagine going through this in the eighties or the nineties even. And, and if you go back a hundred years before yeah. it was way worse, but to, yeah. you know, I'm able to text a friend, connect with them. I'm able yeah. to talk to you. This is, this is, you know, for us older guys, it's, it's very, it's very futuristic that we could do stuff like this in zoom. And I'm sure you've I been know, right? doing different things for like press. You guys just had a, uh, some new music come out and, um, yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, you had a, a you have a record coming out right now too right yeah it came out it came out like almost around the same time i think um oh cool so hey we're, we're in this weird thing together putting out new music and then not being able to play um yeah but i, I found that there's been such a positive reaction to the people who are anticipating your music that i'm really happy that you guys moved forward and released your music for your fans that that um were counting on it you know and didn't push it back yeah there's there was a little bit of talk about, mm -hmm. you know, just in, in entertaining lots of different scenarios. We definitely asked ourselves at one point, like, do we wait to put this out? Do we yeah. wait until we can go out on tour? And there was kind of an immediate consensus amongst the band to put it out quickly, maybe even sooner than we had anticipated, just because um, mm -hmm. 
people, everybody, <laughs> us included, like we, we all need music mm -hmm. more than ever. Um, so yeah, we put it out and we obviously, like you said, we can't go out and play and take it to each place like we normally do. Um, but it's not stopping people from listening to the music. Yeah. We can, we can get on our platforms and stuff and stream it in a hundred different ways. Mm -hmm. So, and I suppose if, you know, if, if you made like a straight up dance record or a party album, maybe it would have felt uncomfortable to release that. But I, yeah. I feel like, uh, you know, it, not that we're saying the same things, but um, we touch on, on hopefully real emotions, you know, mm. and, you know, for me, I'm singing about stuff that is, uh, well, a lot of a lot of my new record was a result of of the the terror of the fire and everything that happened in my life and and the yeah. emotional um, you know roller coaster of that and it seems like your lyrics have always been thought provoking and so these are the kinds of things that I think people can appreciate right now. Um, yeah, absolutely. I was just talking to our friend Mike, who I'm in my band with, and we were talking about how music has always been such a um a reliable friend throughout mm -hmm. all of our lives but right now in the current situation music is it's like never been more vital there's mm -hmm. something about what's happening right now that's making me listen even more deeply to music whether it's new music i'm being turned on to or older music i i just watched um yellow submarine last mm -hmm. night with my girlfriend and we like sat down and had dinner and we watched that old animated classic. And I had seen it when I was a child and I enjoyed it, but I watched it with fresh eyes as an adult. Yeah. And I'm always struck by how um, ingenious the songwriting of the Beatles uh, was. But last night I was watching and when particular songs came on, I was, it was almost upsetting how yeah. good they were you know there's like a moment yeah, when you're it's, like it's really fun to fuck be... i'm never gonna be able to write a song like that <laughs> no you know? no one ever will and but isn't no. that the great thing about music you'll hear in and sometimes once in a while it'll happen with a, a, a modern band where you hear something that a or an artist or songwriter does and you go oh what am i doing what's the point this is so great and, i know and those are the those are the those moments in music that i get excited to get out of bed, you know, because I'm, I've discovered a new album. And, yeah. and um, that's an incredible thing. I actually wrote down some questions I wanted to ask you, believe it or not. Nice. And, and one of the questions, because you talked about the Beatles, who we all love, obviously, mm. I, <clears throat> this was like the 13th question I asked, so I'm going out of order. But um, yeah. what are some bands that you loved so much growing up um, that have aged well you know in mm. other words the bands that you looked up, up to is like they were you know they were everything to you and hugely influential and they still hold up nicely and have aged well versus you know we don't have to shit talk or bring up bands that we listen to and go wait a second i can't believe i like that that's crazy but we just won't mention those, them <laughs> yeah we, there's or we can whatever but um right. yeah i'm just curious how you felt about that that's a great question there it was some, i was just i just got off the phone with mikey and we were talking about the beastie boys cool and um yeah their record check your head was kind of my i was very aware of them before check your head but i i hadn't become like a proper fan yet and when check your head came out there was something in my life i think i was maybe 15 mm -hmm. and it was a moment when i really started just listening to and looking at music very differently and that record really like it like sent me for a, a loop that record and uh Soundgarden Super Unknown okay. still holds up really well for me almost everything from Zeppelin still mm -hmm. holds up really well where I hear I hear like um like Houses of the Holy that you know that album Houses of the Holy mm -hmm. by Zeppelin that one really stands up for me still. And it gives me this like same, like kind of like, you know, goosebumps when I listen to it. There's lots, man. Um, I still listen to Jeff Buckley's album, Grace. And yeah. it's it still, out. it still fucks me up. Oh yes. You know, what's up. It's a little weird <laughs> that I did that. When I look back, I'm like, wow, that was a pretty aggressive move on my end for falling in love with an album. But that album was like uh, my, my comfort of being okay singing, high 
when I re- heard yeah. him singing his falsetto, I'm like, oh, it's because so, people would clown me for doing that when I was a little kid. And yeah. I was in hardcore bands and screaming and trying to be tough or whatever, not be made fun of. And then when I heard Grace, I was like, oh, it's okay to, mm. to be very in touch with your feminine sounding vocal. And that could be a beautiful and masculine thing all at the same time. So that's why I got and, Absolutely. You know, and I was just interested in getting a tattoo. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's good timing. It's, it's an aggressive move for sure. But uh, yeah, Grace is incredible. And some of the live stuff and uh, yeah. the demos that came out later, you know. Yeah, he was just a, a, a haunting um, singer. When I hear his voice, even now, there's something about, uh, there was a quality in his voice that doesn't come around very often. Um, it's like a once in a generation no. quality in the way that he was able to sing. And uh, there was such a tragedy to lose him you know, so soon after he really got started. Um, and that's actually one, mm-hmm place where I, I kicked myself that I wasn't able to go and see him perform live. Um, I saw him once with, uh, yeah. do you remember the band Shudder to yeah. Think? Yeah. They had, an, they had like a side project Craig, called uh, Mind, Craig Science of Mind. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Buckley, I saw, I went to see Mind, Science of Mind and Jeff Buckley was playing bass on a couple of songs and I, I mm-hmm. knew who he was but I wasn't like a proper fan yet. And then it was ap- shortly thereafter that I kind of started really listening to uh, Grace. And anyway, if there, anybody that's listening hasn't listened to Jeff Buckley, uh, I think we can both agree it's yeah. worth taking a dive. Very important, very important. And, and so, you know, there's there's been a few people who have touched that, that realm, I think since then, whether it's a Tom York or, um, mm. you know, and, and there's a few people that, that are, escaping me but um yeah that's a that's a great great answer so jeff buckley grace Mm -hmm. um i wanted to circle back to sort of around the time we we kind of met but never really sat down to talk until a little bit later i knew family members of of yours and um i was in a, a band called hometown hero at the time um and it it was a it was a there was a moment i had at one of your concerts that i wanted to tell you about where um, Mm. I had never been around any sort of successful bands or had been around um, sort of what I what I thought to be a a massive audience and I saw Mm. you guys at the Palladium and I remember you know knowing you guys because we'd met and you guys were always really nice and then you guys played and everybody the whole sea of people on that floor were singing along and I remember mm. thinking, having a moment right then, and I think I've, I've talked about this in other interviews, where I thought like, wow, I could, I could, not that I thought I'd get there, but I thought, um, or I certainly didn't have confidence that I'd get there, but I thought like, okay, that I see that this is possible, if that mm. makes sense, because I knew you guys through, yeah. you know, friends of friends and family members, and I thought like, oh my God, every everybody here singing along, crowd surfing, which is, mm. you know, fun to think about today, right? And uh, that was such Imagine. a big moment, you know, and then we ended up playing the Palladium and I had my own moment similar to that. Yeah. And um, I'm sure you guys didn't realize I was feeling this way, but it was it was very inspiring to see a local band, if mm. if we could call it that or whatever, right? Yeah, Make yeah. it to that level and then get bigger. And then you guys took that same band on tour and we opened up for you guys on like a secondary market arena tour. And mm-hmm. um, I wanted to thank you and, and Mikey for that uh now in 2000 absolutely <laughs> but you know that was a big deal for me to see that the operation on that big of a level and see that well you can connect to this many people and it's it is possible mm. and that gave me some hope that maybe i could potentially get there you know so i just want to bring that up oh that's amazing man thank yeah. you so much i honestly i'm um it's such a strange thing to strange in a good way mostly mm-hmm. to have uh an idea that's sort of, you know, it's the, the, that kind of that acorn and that you hope will, will blossom into a full blown um, oak tree at some time, but there's never like a guarantee that that's going to happen. So, and in fact, it's more likely than not that it won't happen. Yeah, but for sure. um, it's, it's humbling to take something from a kind of seed of a thought and have the courage to to even attempt to scale it up and up. So I, I applaud your 
um, all of your efforts too, and all of your successes as well, because I, I know how hard it is. I know yeah. how rare it is um, to even have like a moment, mm-hmm. let alone like a sequence of moments in amongst any career in the arts. Um, thankfully, it's like fun. You know, yeah. <laughs> there yeah. are, there's, there's so much, there's so much like navigating of minefield that you have to do in order to play the game. Absolutely. Um, but there's a, there's the potential for that navigating of those minefields to be like a dance. Uh-huh. And sometimes you get good at the dance and you're avoiding not literal explosions, but yeah. you're, you're avoiding things that will, that will handicap you in mm-hmm. so many ways, left and right. And all of a sudden you can get good at this little dance. And then while you're doing it, you're noticing the thing is like growing and growing. And then people are starting to sing back at you and people mm-hmm. are showing up anywhere that you go to play. And it's it's a really, it's an amazing thing. The only thing, the word that I can really come up with to describe it is it's humbling. It's truly mm-hmm. humbling because you have an awareness of and a memory of it not being there. You know? Oh yeah. Like remember when you're a kid and you're like, I want to do that. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. I remember having those same feelings. Uh, Mikey and I went to go see um, Rage Against the Machine when their mm-hmm. first record came out. We went to see them at the Whiskey A Go Go, which if wow. people listening don't know, that club holds maybe what four hundred people, five hundred people tops. Now, but I bet you they they filled it up and you know yeah. broke the laws of capacity back then. You know, yeah, sure. it was it was essentially like a like a bar with a, a kind of a high stage and Very, a sound system. A stage that's way too high for the size, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. if you're in the audience, like you're looking up, like you're in the first row of a movie theater. But yeah. um, I I was watching them and they were fucking awesome back mm-hmm. in the day, man. There's I mean they're still awesome, but they when you're fourteen, fifteen years old and you're seeing them do that thing it's pretty profound and Mikey and I walked out of there wide-eyed and kind of dizzy and Mikey looked at me he's like we got to play there I know we can do it yeah I know and we had just started our band he's like we're going to play at the whiskey and then you scale it up you just keep scaling it up we got to play the palladium we can do it I know we can do it Mm -hmm. and it just there's it's a it's a funny journey I don't know what I'm talking about right now I'm just kind of rambling but no thank you for (laughs) No, yeah, we're just going going through the, that's the cool thing is it's the community of music and giving back and the muse and the full circle nature of what what, what we do. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, Rage. And then that was a big deal. And especially being at an impactful age where you're still mm. a sponge in a lot of ways to see that angst. And, and um, you know, I saw a lot of hardcore shows there. Um, you touched on something uh, that, I wanted to ask you, I, I had written down and um, I'm not sure if anyone's ever asked you this. I hope they haven't. If they have, I'm sorry. But because, you know, I remember it becoming a thing where you guys were kind of an underground band, then became massive in the alternative world and then did cross over into fully mainstream, um, mm. probably with, with Drive, I would assume. And yeah. Was there any, and, and then you'd be, I'm sure there was a point where it crossed over into being kind of radical to go out in public more than you had ever <laughs> anticipated, I'm sure, right? And and to some degree, I'm sure that happens still now, but I'm wondering if there was anything about that rise that surprised you to get to that position. You're, you know, ever since you're a little kid, you're hoping for this thing that happens and you're going, wait a second, this this one aspect kind of is fucked up about this that I didn't anticipate. Is there anything that you experienced like that? For sure. Yeah. That's a really interesting um, point. And the the question, the answer to your question is yes, there's um, most of it was unanticipated. Mm -hmm. Most of the, the way that it felt and my experience, especially like you said, once it kind of peaked its head above that kind of uh, underground or alternative scene and it, and it moved into the mainstream. And, you know, you're, you're walking through an airport and seeing your face on the cover of a couple of magazines. Yeah. And you're, you're, your inclination is to turn away from it and go the other direction because right. it's like, yeah. not because you're trying to run from it, but because there's really no 
real human blueprint for such an experience. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't know how you're supposed to deal with it. And so there's really only a handful of ways that people in the short period of time that there has been uh, like rock stardom or, yeah. or versions of celebrity, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's really only a handful of ways that people have reacted to it. And most of them are not good. Most yeah. of them are, they uh, become insufferable pricks, egomaniacal bastards who nobody wants to be around. And they basically pay people to be around them and tell them yes. Yeah, of course. Or they self-medicate mm -hmm. and uh, fall into a kind of um, uh, a, a chemical induced malaise. Uh, yeah. And then the other is you kind of hide. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are other ways, there are people, there are a few people that have learned how to deal with it that are truly admirable. And he's never been a rock star, but he, I, I've met him a handful of times and he seems like a really great dude, but I'm going to use him as an example because I've never seen somebody embody such a big public role with so much grace. And it took him quite a long time to get there, but he's there now. And I'm talking about Robert Downey Jr. Do you know this guy? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I he, don't know him. I don't know him. Uh, the anticipation was killing me with that. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a big setup. Yeah. So obviously he's, you know, he's one of the biggest actors of our, of, of his generation. Mm -hmm. um, but he holds this huge, huge container. He's a, he's a massive, one of the biggest movie stars in history. And, when you see him like operating, he's kind of doing the dance. It's like, he, it looks like he's having fun. And that's, mm -hmm. that in and of itself is remarkable because back to your question, it's like, there's, it's kind of fucking scary for the first handful of years of the experience. You, when you're dreaming about it as a kid, uh, I'm sure you can attest to this to a certain degree. You don't really, because there's no blueprint for the experience, you don't really know how it's gonna feel if it works. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my God, it works. They're playing our songs on the radio and people are showing up in the thousands to come to your concert. Hooray. Yay, this is awesome. And then yeah. you go to take a piss at your local restaurant and everybody next to you, like, wants to shake your hand while their other hands on their dick. And you're like, this is weird. How do I, I thought of it that way? That's incredible. How, has that ever happened to you? Uh, <laughs> it's happened to me. <laughs> So yeah, many times. Weird, I've had some weird moments. I'm not. I don't remember it. Like, yeah, I think so. But I think that's a pretty, pretty obvious slip where you go, "Hey, let's just let's just roll the elbows or whatever," because clearly we yeah. both were just touching our wieners. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a heavy distance experience just, for sure. You, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, that yeah. has happened to me a couple of times, but that's not the point. The, the point is, is that it, it's um. Th th there have. It's been strange. I've had to learn how to um, assimilate and digest the experience and, um, and not without some hardship yeah. over it, to be perfectly honest. It's, it's been very strange. And then there's, and it's not just you're successful now and deal with that. It's like, it always looks like this. Or sometimes it's, <clears throat> and then yeah. a, sl a slow climb back to a certain area or sure a slow descent into hell. So you, you really have to be on your game psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, if you're, if you're going to survive. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying this to you and ask your question. I know you know all these things, but also I'm, I'm saying this to people who might be listening out there who uh, maybe they're have, have dreams of excelling or succeeding to a certain degree in whatever field they might be in. And um, I think it's an amazing thing to uh, to dream and not be afraid to dream big and to scale what you're doing to whatever degree you want to. Um, but I suppose the the takeaway is that it's never what you thought it was going to be. Yeah, because um, well, so, you don't you don't think of that part of it. I remember going like no. just I I never signed up for the. Uh, and it doesn't, I don't mean to sound like we're sitting here complaining about the success. It's just that. No, 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 no. I, I never thought about like having to see myself that much, <laughs> you know, in that way where I was like, oh, okay. And, um, you know, cause music, it, <laughs> that's a been, funny point. you know, I, the music yeah. is so important to me and it's, it's what I love more than anything. And so I was going to do it no matter what, I didn't have a backup plan, you know, necessarily. Yeah. I thought I'd maybe be more behind the scenes. And then the thing thrusted me into a situation where I had to be more, aware of that and uh yeah, yeah 
some people like that though you know some some people are comfortable and i'm not um i had another question since we're mm -hmm. on the uh topic i mean well, we're sitting on not knowing how concerts will look again we all know that not to go down the rabbit hole of negativity there but mm -hmm. i've seen you guys play um like i said a, a rowdier kind of show like the palladium mm -hmm. and then I've, yeah. we've also done some radio festivals together uh like we did the last time we we had you me and mikey at dinner in dc uh, mm. in washington dc and um we did that festival and i remember some really cool stuff during that show during both our sets there was a guy in a wheelchair that was being crowd surfed i have a memory of that and some really neat stuff like that and i was wondering as you look back or forward what's your favorite kind of crowd reaction is it the sing-alongs is it the rowdy jumping is it the crowd surfing, the old stage dives when we used to be able to do that when the shows were smaller? You know, like what? Yeah. What's your absolute favorite? Uh, having having done so many different kinds of shows and so many different kinds of environments over the years, um, I've definitely gathered a kind of a, a I suppose, a predilection towards a kind of reaction and uh any any reaction yeah is is cool i'm personally i'm like just happy to be doing it um i i my i suppose my most favorite kind of reaction is like a rowdy general admission yeah big flat open field where mm -hmm. people can kind of go wherever they want and um dance how they want to unencumbered um uninhibited singing along you know really like um participating like the yeah. more uh, an audience participates and it and it becomes less about um five dudes on stage mm -hmm. like performing like yeah. this is our presentation of music and you I listen know. now i love when it's this kind of uh gooey amorphous uh mixture where you can't really tell where one thing starts and the other ends those are kind of my favorite but i also have sort of over the years we've played so many shows where we weren't the band that people were showing up to see mm -hmm. and we've gotten this strange people pay attention but they kind of they just really pay attention and they're either sitting there or they're standing there just watching and not really reacting yeah and i'm sure you've done a bunch of those shows as well and I've almost come to love those reactions yeah, too. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. There's a, there's a challenge there, but there's also a part of me that's like kind of accepting that we are not what they want to see. Yeah. And so it, yeah. it, it triggers this perverse reaction in me where I'm kind of like, oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, it forces different things out of me, different unconscious reactions, which can be fun sometimes. So some of the funnest concerts we've played have been those rowdy sing along type audiences. But then some of my other favorites have been the ones where people were properly perplexed by what they were seeing in us. <laughs> so what yeah. about you? Do you have a preference? Well, I, I go back to to the earlier shows where there wasn't a big barricade and as much separation between us and the crowd. And you know, right. you want your songs to reach reach as many people as possible. If you believe in what you're saying, you know, saying and and hoping people are finding some therapy in your music. So I, you know, I'm mm. stoked about that and very grateful. But as to, as as it got larger and we crossed over into sort of more of the mainstream consciousness, um, I, I noticed that shows were becoming. Well, the audience got younger. And you could tell mm -hmm. that some of the people, it was their first show. So the last thing I was going to do is do a front flip into this sweet, <laughs> innocent kid that didn't see that coming, you know? Um, right. <laughs> but I would say overall, like, there's two things that are incredible to me. If you, the festival style show, it's fun to fantasize about this right now, of course, because we can't do it. I know, right. Where it's a sea of people, as far as the eye can see, and you can't tell if it's 5,000 or 50,000 plus or whatever. And, um, and we've, any of our fans that are on here know that we do this thing where we try to see if we can get the most amount of people to crowd surf in world history at the same time, you know, or at least I say that. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And then when that's happening, you're, you're getting a show too. They're giving back to you. So you, yeah, you a don't have to sound as good because no one's really paying attention anymore. Like, <laughs> well, this is, look at this incredible, you know, party atmosphere. Um, yeah. And then of course the sing-alongs are, are nuts to me, you know, to hear it. 
to hear a group of people sing the songs that you thought of, wrote down the words, you yeah. know, presented them the best way you were physically capable of and having it be returned to you. That's to me the ultimate, I would say. Yeah, I agree. There's really, there's nothing like it. And I feel like anybody watching or listening to this can can get a sense of the experience because uh, if you've ever been in, in a big crowd singing along with thousands of people to a song that you love, it's that. It's essentially that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, with, um, there, you know, there's a couple of obvious, like, uh, caveats, you know, if you want to like, in, like, well, I wrote the song that you're all singing. That's like, that makes right. it special too. But for the most part, it's just that feeling of being uh, a part of something that is uh, so much bigger than you alone. To be, to have a, a moment in time where you are connected to a large community of people yeah. is, uh, it's that's where the wiring is like there's no real wiring like I'm talking about there's no blueprint for the experience of celebrity or the experience of being a rock star it's a truly novel experience and it's why so many people get in trouble around the experience but but the experience of singing in a mass group that's as old as human beings and there's a reason yeah. it feels so good to do it is because that's what we're wired for. We are wired communally. That's what mm -hmm. we're supposed to do. So when all those things are lining up and it's all working like that, that's why everybody leaves like high and every, you know, particle in their body is charged. And that's mm -hmm. why you want to go back. And now I really miss playing God. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I feel that. Is there, a, is there, so I'm learning on a, on a, you know, on a totally different level where I just put on my fourth record, you guys have many mm. more, but I'm starting to, to look back on the first record. Sometimes it takes me like a, a full year or two or, or even longer to understand what the hell I did mm. for better or for worse. Sometimes I go, Whoa, that was bad. I, I don't like that song I did or the way I sang this part. I was wondering, as you look back to those first, let's say four records, um, if there's if there's one song that sticks out to you that's surpri is surprising you how well it's aged, mm. and that could be since we're getting hyped on playing live and fantasizing about that, maybe maybe we're talking more about how it feels to play live. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I, I can absolutely relate to the the sheer horror of yeah. looking back on some early material that we've done and all I can really do is like shake my head and kind of laugh a little bit. I, I, I have learned to um, have quite a sense of humor about a lot of our yeah. earlier music because we were, you know, we were learning on the job. That's what you do when you're in a band. You essentially like you want to play, you're excited to, to play music. So you want to get out there and do it as soon as possible. But um, we, you guys were kids. You really were. We were kids, you know. And we essentially learned how to be a band while we were in this band. Uh, uh, I've, I've said this a lot before, but um, most bands that people are aware of, most musicians have the relative obscurity, have a, re a relative obscurity around most of the music that they kind of learned how to mm -hmm. be a musician. So they were in other bands or they were in bands that people didn't listen to. And then maybe like the second or the third project gets discovered and and that's how people discover them so with our band like this is all of our first band and yeah. our only band so the music that we wrote when we were teenagers is like on itunes and spotify yeah and, and... probably highly you know requested at your shows and so <laughs> it is and i can't tell if people are requesting it with like a a sense of irony and like sure. dude play you know speak free and uh we're like no no i wouldn't yeah. even know how to play it if, if yeah. we like try but it would be terrible um so sorry to answer your question a song of ours that i think has aged well an older song you know actually we just did this uh, 20 years of make yourself tour yeah how was how did that fall. feel how did that feel to go through that it was so much fun and that's that's actually the answer to your question is so make yourself was <laughs> technically our second full-length record mm -hmm. and but when i remember when we were writing that record there was 
uh, there was a sense that we were coming into our own as songwriters. Sure. And we had spent, you know, over two years on tour playing the album that came before it. It's called Science. And um, we kind of, we did it and we kind of did it to death. It's almost like we put right. that that era of our band, which was like the first taste a lot of people got, we kind of put it to bed in a lot of ways. So we came home, started writing what became Make Yourself, and it immediately was sounding very different. It immediately had much more of an economy of space. It immediately had, it was more thoughtful. It was more um, mature. And so going out this past fall and performing the record from front to back every night for like, you know, 45, 50 shows, um, the takeaway for me was that that album has aged quite well, in my cool. opinion. Um, so, yeah. I, I actually, so I listened, I did listen to that record this morning as I worked out. Because I was like, oh, oh nice. I, I want to go back down this because, you know, that was a record that was um, inspiring to me because that was when I saw you have that kind of breakout moment. And um, mm. what struck me was, and what I think separated you guys from a lot of the other bands that became popular around that time was a sense of melody so if you and it seems like mm. songs with good melody and lyrical content that seems to matter and is from the heart and soul last regardless of what guitar tone or regardless of what kind of drum sound or style yeah. you know the band is and that goes for all genres of music i think um for sure so that's cool that you guys got Thank to have you, that experience by the way yeah, no problem, no problem. Hopefully yeah. I'll get to do a 20 year thing at one point as well, you know? Um, so I know you gotta go. Yeah, I'm in, sure you will. I hope. I know you gotta go in three minutes. So here, I'm gonna hit you with a, a heavy heavy one for the last question. And and you could answer as long as you want because I know you gotta go, so it's your, your call. But, so we're all in this thing together, it, it's heavy. I was wondering if you have any advice to yours or my, fa your or my fans um, on mm. how to deal with this is a this is a full loaded question. Disappointment, mm. you know the breakups, mm. and loneliness. Mm. That yeah, that's uh, we've all gone through those radical breakups, right? That just changed us forever. It's for like, sure. And and this is sort of like the, its own weird world breakup mm. with human interaction in some ways. <laughs> you know. So I was just yeah, not to get too true. evil on you, but I was just wondering. Uh, do you have any advice for people before you have to run? Yeah, I mean, there's, I suppose I should preface anything I say with, um, I'm only a middle-aged guy who's also been doing his best to stay at home and wash his hands a lot. So I'm not the expert here, but I do know that there, I'll answer it in a twofold way. I know that the current circumstances have provided a lot of opportunity for a pretty intense confusion about what's going on just in the world and the state of the world. And so I've found myself when there are the moments where I'm desperate for information, um, I found myself kind of leaning back into certain, uh, I suppose you'd call them uh, philosophically speaking, st stoic ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that some of your listeners are familiar with um, stoicism and uh one of the tenets of it being like you know focus on the things that you know you can control and don't worry as much about what you can't control and so there's so much that's out of our control in the situation it's a really good opportunity to just um uh keep your metaphorical house clean you know Perfect. take care of yourself take care of what's immediately around you because that you can mm -hmm. control. Um, so that's in a, in a larger sense. But as far as uh, breakups and, and loneliness, which <laughs> is definitely a part of what's happening right now, yeah. um, there's a practice that I have gone into at different periods of my life because I've definitely had my fair share of pretty intense relationships and, and the disillusion of some of those relationships. And for me, writing has been uh, an invaluable tool uh, in my growth and in my process of growth and my process of attempting to wake up. So writing, so for, that means writing songs in my case, um, 
in your case, that is painting pictures for me, uh, painting mm -hmm. emotions that can't be written down because I can't find the words for them. Sometimes when sure. you can't find the actual words, that's a great place for melody because melody can transmit uh, sadness and joy and confusion. Mm -hmm. they, everything that you can um, transmit through words, you can do so with melody. And if you can combine melody and words, you can create like this, this alchemy that can be life-changing. So that's a taller order, but something that everybody can do if they're feeling lost or lonely or heartbroken is they can write a letter to themselves. They can write a letter to that person and never send it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can, they can pour their heart out. They can say everything they needed to say and they can just delete it afterwards. Or they can another, if you can do this safely, a good exercise is you write it down and don't edit yourself. Just write it with a pen or a pencil on paper and then you burn it. Right. Burn <laughs> it's it's safely, like an old especially, especially where we live. Safely. You know? <laughs> yeah, we, we don't do that outside you here. Can write we... this down. <laughs> you, you can write it down. You can write a letter, keep it, and then years down the line if we have to go through this again um you could send it then you know to that to that Absolutely. person you know? yeah yeah well, yeah hey, man, there, I, I know you gotta go and i don't want to keep hmm. you longer than you know i know you gotta get out of here um but i want to tell anyone anyone any of my fans who who haven't checked out your instagram it's really interesting and there's some beautiful art on there and i appreciate um i appreciate the captions i've followed up on it and some of the stuff you're saying is is i think interesting and thought provoking and, and I appreciated it. So um, I wanted Thanks, to talk man. about I your art, but that. we ran out of time because I was going to ask about that, but um, it's kind of all there on your well, Instagram for people to see for sure. Yeah. Well, let's chat again at some point. Um, hopefully we won't yeah. be locked Maybe we'll check in in a couple, longer, but... couple weeks and make sure we're still yeah. alive, you know? <laughs> let's do, let's do that. Cool. Word up, dude. Good well, to thanks see for you, coming on, Brandon. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon, buddy. Take care. Yeah, man. Take care, buddy. Bye. Thanks for being here, everybody. Sorry, I spent the first half of the week doing a few other things that I needed to take care of. And um, anytime I don't do, don't have a guest or have a conversation like this, it's because I'm doing something that I hope you'll appreciate eventually. Um, so I'll see you next week. I'll be doing a bunch of radio things and I'll definitely have uh, some new guests. I'm gonna talk to Mike Mo Capaldi, one of the best skaters that ever lived. And um, see how he overcame adversity with some injuries he went through and um, all that heavy stuff and ask him how, how, how the hell he risks breaking his arm every time he tries to do like a 12 stair or whatever. Anyways, hope you guys have a great, great weekend and I'll see you soon.